President of Association Solutions over at Blue Sky. I've been with Blue Sky a little over a year now, um, and I've been in the association technology space coming up actually on uh, about 20 years now. Um, uh, about half of that actually working with uh, at associations, and then the other half working for a couple of various technology partners in the space. Um, Blue Sky itself then um, has been around close to 20 years as well. Uh, founded in 2002, we're headquartered out in San Diego, but we are a largely remote company um, even before 2020 happened. Uh, so we're spread all across the country. Myself located in the Washington DC area in Northern Virginia. Uh, we work with uh, over 300 associations and nonprofits, primarily in the association and nonprofit space. Path LMS is the platform that we're going to talk about today and then we'll walk through some product demo on. But we also do offer a number of uh, professional services uh, related to that platform. So um, the first uh, half of Blue Sky's existence, really about 10 years, was focused on creating virtual events, creating hybrid events, doing on-site AV capture at annual conferences, publishing DVD ROMs, CDs, etc., things like that. And then in about 2014, we launched Path. Um, and starting delivering the content through that mechanism. Uh, the events are still a big part of our business. So that's a big part of our professional services branch that we offer. Um, and we recently have also uh, expanded to offer um, learning strategy and design services. So not just the events production team, but also looking at the content that you're putting on an LMS, uh, whether you looking to build a new program or maybe just refresh what you've got and create more immersive experiences. That's the kind of thing that the, um, the learning strategy and design team can come in and help with. So I wanted to start here, just kind of taking it from the top um, a, uh, and drawing some attention to some of the key pillars of the value that associations are bringing to their members. Um, and everybody here is to, ready to talk LMS today. So this is a little bit of preaching to the choir, but I did want to bring it to the forefront of uh, your mind at this point, because uh, a lot of this is changing. And as Reggie mentioned, um, this has been a crazy year for all of us in this space. Uh, I bring up these things as uh, the delivery mechanisms for them are evolving. So thinking about what are the things that we're trying to get out in front of our members? What are the things about our organization that are bringing them to us in the first place? And actually a little bit of a, a personal, personal note, um, it was the CAE program and the, uh, and the technology council that first brought me to ASAE many years back. So uh, interesting to just look at like, okay, well that's actually, when I think about this from my perspective, that fits right into these kind of things that we're gonna be, um, that we're gonna be talking about today. So with these kind of value pillars in mind then, what's going on right now, right? What's going on in 2020? We look at uh, the kind of demand that Blue Sky eLearn served prior to 2020, the things that people were coming to us for, the ways that people were delivering on those education, networking, um, community type values. And we saw, you know, obviously the in-person conference, maybe some hybrid meetings, webinars, of course, super popular for years and years, online learning. And now we're stuck in this space where that's really all that we've got. Um, to offer. That's the only mechanism that we have to drive this stuff out. So it's all gone fully virtual. Uh, it's all through a learning management system or a virtual conference platform. Obviously, um, bringing a ton more attention to what organizations like Blue Sky are doing, uh, what other uh, education uh, products are serving this space. And then, of course, uh, nobody can predict the future, but we are all wondering now what does this look like when we come out of this time and we're you know we're kind of hovering somewhere in between here now one step forward two steps back on getting from the now to the post um, but uh, you know our opinion here is that a lot of this is cats out of the bag type stuff and what we've been seeing since um, you know early 2020 is ultimately once folks started to get situated in this space you've got a lot more opportunity for a much broader reach uh, a lot more accessibility of your programs, of your education that are now afforded to you. And a lot of folks that uh, have come into this space have been 
uh, perhaps wanting to do so for many years without the political willpower or the budget designation or whatever it might be. And now they're one way or another, they're doing it. Um, so they're learning what that experience looks like and learning what they can actually gain from it. It's interesting now to look at um, comparing, you know, there's a lot of panic, a lot of scramble in February, March, nobody really knew what to do or how long they were going to do it. Things have settled out a little bit through the summer. People mostly know what they're doing for the fall, but now we still don't know um, when we're going to go back to in person. You've still got hotel contracts to worry about. You've still got lots of things to figure out. So, um, you know, ultimately, we're in a situation where you still kind of have to plan for basically everything. Uh, at, at some ex extent, you have to have a lot of contingency plans in place and you'll have to have a lot of your bases covered to make sure that you can continue providing on those values um, one way or another. So at Blue Sky, we see organizations come to us uh, at a lot of different stages in their educational programs. Um, and we build our base, our, we build our business based on this. Um, a lot of folks will come to us maybe for their first LMS. Uh, they've got an assortment of videos and webinars from past conferences, a lot of archives. They just want to post some things, get some technology out there and get folks having access to it. Um, then maybe they are actually, um, you know, looking at integrating with other partners in their tech stack, other products that they're using, uh, evolving that selection such a, to a point that uh, it fits better into their space and presents better to their audiences. As they move up the road, we look at further content development. We start to see some cross department coordination, better alignment of goals. And this has been an interesting thing for us in 2020, especially to see uh, a lot of departments coming together um, within organizations uh, that uh, previously might have been a little more siloed, right? Uh, especially, you know, between events and education. And then ultimately looking at comprehensive organization wide education initiatives. So we build our programs out in order to help people move up this pathway and they come to us at all different stages. Again, whether it's brand new, whether you're looking to replace something where you're looking to evolve your content to another stage or uh, get to that next level, whatever that next level might be. So when you think about Blue Sky, um, we're an e-learning company and we see e-learning as a very broad umbrella. Um, the LMS platform is the foundation for it, right? That's what we build on. Uh, but we've designed our services around many other facets of education to help you move up that journey and move up that road. We've got a deep events production team um, that's been producing a ton of events for folks um, this year in 2020. And as I mentioned, we also have a new learning strategy and design team uh, that focuses more on the, uh, the content itself, the coursework, maybe branding, strategy, marketing, sales strategy, things like that. All right, so that's just a quick introduction. And now I'm gonna change gears real quick and we'll uh, take a look at the product a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to do a, uh, a product tour by way of a number of client sites here. And we're going to start off with the National Association of Professional Organizers, who has a very well organized site uh, that I love to show because they've done a lot of work in presenting their content in a way that uh, makes sense for folks that are just getting started, as well as people that have maybe been a part of the organization for a while. Maybe they are looking for a certification. Maybe they are looking to specialize in their industry. And they've built their courses out to, um, to target these different uh, audience segments. So this is a landing page on PATH. Uh, it's got HTML graphics. It's got design. It's got text explaining what the programs look like. And they've created uh, essentially different pathways for you based on what you're actually looking to achieve when you first come to the platform. Are you just looking for a uh, library of archives? Are you brand new to NAPO and need to figure out what's going on? Or are you trying to specialize and you've been here for a little while? They're using categories, bundles, subcategories, sections, a number of different features in the platform to organize their content in this way. And they're also using a digital badging program that uh, focuses on some of the certificates that they offer. So if I scroll down here a little bit, you can see here are some product bundles that they've created. 
bundles can be used for again just simply organizing your content as well as maybe um you know marketing efforts uh some folks will create a bundle that is your uh september special or your uh fall discounted three courses or anything like that <clears throat> coming back up a little bit here if i jump into one of these this will then take me to an area where I can explore the courses that are related to uh, whatever I just clicked. With the landing page, some categories, search tools, and a, uh, a filtered catalog based on uh, what it is that I'm looking for. So I looked for specialist certificates. They've got a number of different certificates based on what you're trying to achieve. And then I can click in on that and I can see all the courses that are available for uh, that particular certificate and that program. So if we dig into a, uh, a course itself a little bit further, uh, and I'm switching over to another client site here. This is the United States and Canadian Academy of Pathologists. Um, they have uh, branded out a course landing page very nicely, and they do a lot of great design for their, for their course pages. Uh, they have their subject matter experts front and center here. They offer CEs, their medical organization. Uh, very clearly identify learning objectives, target audience for their courses, a lot of great material here on the courses themselves. I can purchase all of this course uh, as a whole, or I can purchase sections of the course or modules individually. Now, quick word or two about purchasing. Um, we do offer single sign-on with most major AMS platforms and CRMs. So when I sign in, it's going to take me over to that login on that platform in order to get in. Uh, and then if I want to uh, purchase an item, it'll generally take me through that uh, e-commerce transaction process so that I can buy it on your CRM and have access immediately over here on the LMS. Now they have, as I mentioned, identified different modules, different sections. I can easily see at a glance what sections um, include, and then I can buy them individually as well if I wanted to. Another way to organize your courses uh, is the American Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists. Um, they have uh, a number of live events here front and center along with their courses. Now, as I mentioned, um, you know, associations have been doing webinars for ages. Um, we do have webinar tools in our platform. We have integrations with Adobe Connect, GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, and Zoom. What that means is when you create those uh, events in the platform uh, in path, uh, they are also created in the integrated uh, webinar tool, so you don't need to do double duty on any of that stuff. We'll also capture all the reporting data back into path when you host a webinar through our LMS using one of those tools. And they just live front and center um, along with the courses. AAPS has done some cool work on their design um, for the course car cards. And if I dig into one of the courses, I can also see how they've structured it in a way a little bit similar to USCAP, where uh, I can purchase the entire course or I can look at uh, modules. <clears throat> these, these modules are you know, a video, an assessment, a survey, and a certificate. So standard stuff here to walk through the course and get that experience. And we do store all media, all video in HTML5. It's responsive out of the box. It's mobile friendly. It's accessible, ADA compliant, and Section 508 compliant as well. You may notice on some of these pages, there's a little question mark help box down here. We have embedded uh, contextual help documentation for the platform. So uh, contextual based on who you are and where you are in the platform. You're going to see screenshots in here, walkthroughs, videos, all of the documentation for any new features, new releases. Our product roadmap is available in the help center and a embedded ticketing system is also embedded here. So your end users, your learners can contact our technical support and we offer unlimited technical support for all of your learners, as well as unlimited support for you as uh, staff. Moving right along here, I want to bring up the uh, SRA International, Society of Research Administrators International. They launched a really cool micro-credentialing program um, about a year and a half ago now, the Level Up Micro-Credentialing. So micro-credentialing, a trend that probably uh, most of you all are familiar with, but generally speaking, it's a sort of mini certificate or a way to get some kind of recognition for a skill. 
that you've learned through a program uh, and then perhaps have some kind of social component to that or some kind of badging or gamification uh, recognition for that. So Level Up is the name of their program and they are achieving this with an integration to Higher Logic uh, online community program uh, as well as an integration to Badge Cert. Badge Cert is an external uh, badging validation that will validate your learning skills achieved from our LMS out to your social networks like LinkedIn and similar. We also have an integration with Credly, uh, which does some uh, similar tools, similar features. Now, if I look at one of the SRA courses, then I can see similar uh, experience. They are using SCORM. I'll talk a little bit more about SCORM. We do support external content packages, immersive storyline, SCORM content, uh, and then take a quiz, get your certificate. Now I talked a little bit about events in the uh, sort of preamble slide deck there, but I do want to uh, show a few sites that are featuring uh, virtual events that they've put on recently. Um, we're working with the American Association for Cancer Research on a number of events this fall. This was one that they produced in July. Now this site was specifically focused just on this one event. So PATH can take many different forms and sort of the way that you uh, want to create and deploy your, um, your site. Uh, some organizations will simply use an instance of PATH for a per event basis. So I'm going to deploy PATH and it's really just going to be for this one event and that's the only thing that's in there. Um, but it's very possible to do a lot more than that even with a singular instance. In fact, AACR is now doing an instance of PATH for uh, six upcoming events that are uh, this fall, uh, actually starting later this week. Um, and then each of these areas, if I were to dig into them, I can see that they've built out more of their programs, more of those uh, features and functionality that are geared towards a, a virtual event rather than maybe a little bit more traditional LMS tools. Now, organizations also use our platform um, both for an LMS and a virtual conference at the same time. Uh, it doesn't need to be one or the other. This is an organization that put an event on with us back in June, the Association of Washington School Principals. Um, this is their learning management homepage. Uh, so it's not a virtual conference homepage, but on this homepage, they do feature the virtual conference. Now this did happen back in June. So this is, uh, you know, already happened, uh, but they're leaving it all up so that people can see the archives, can get access to things and can get certificates after the fact. Um, and sell content after the fact. Now, if I go into um, the summer conference they've built out, I can see the way that they've designed the navigation for the event, um, the keynotes, the exhibit hall, breakouts. Now, everyone wants to know about exhibit hall these days, so I'll touch on that for just a little bit. But first, I want to show what they did with keynotes. Um, with the keynote setup, they created, uh, oh, I need to be logged in on that page, excuse me. With a keynote set up, they created a, um, a landing page for each keynote, categorized. Uh, perhaps they have changed this since yesterday. Um, that does happen. This is a live demo, so I apologize for that. I'm going to show a different client site uh, that also had a virtual conference um, and had an LMS side by side with it. Um, NASN is the National Association of School Nurses and they did an event a little bit later in July. Um, and this is, again, this is their learning management homepage. So on this site, uh, I can see, you know, they had this featured event. They also have courses, they also have programs, they have CEs available, they have webinar archives, all of these things living in the same space under the same umbrella on the same instance of the platform. And if I go into the virtual NSN area, here I can see the navigation that they've created. And we actually worked with our uh, learning strategy and design team to build this experience out with them. Um, so they've got easy ways to get through. And this was a, quite a large conference. This was a five-day conference that we produced with them. Um, we produce content on webinar tools. We also create uh, live streams uh, fully live as well as mock live recordings as well. So I can easily see, hey, here's the agenda. Again, this event did already happen. So these are all just recordings now. 
but you can get a, a look and feel for the experience of that. I'm gonna see if I can still get to the exhibit area on this AWSP site. If not, I can show you another one. Yes, okay. Now, uh, this is a landing page for an exhibit resource uh, center. Um, and this is simply just HTML. So like simple logos and links type thing. There's lots of HTML real estate on the platform sort of, uh, you know, get you started there. But then I can also click in and see um, they've created a virtual booth, which is a landing page for those sponsors. And then they can determine uh, what they want to allow them to upload that. So this is actually a pretty nicely built out one where the WMC or YMCA uploaded a video, has some flyers, has some links, has some more videos. And then again, using traditional LMS tools, you can upload any kind of content you want, documents, links, even assessments or surveys. Uh, and a lot of folks are using the certificate tool to gamify the exhibitor experience. For example, hey, check out all of our exhibitors and get your passport stamped. Now you get a certificate, maybe that enters you into a raffle, maybe that gets you a discount on your next registration, whatever it might be, sort of an uh, allegory to what you might do at a, at a uh, in-person um, exhibit hall. All right, now I'm gonna come back around here quickly and show one more site, the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Um, has been doing a lot of content development with our learning strategy and design team. So they've got a site and all of their content is built out in Storyline. So it's all fully immersive experience. And I'm gonna show an example here of a course that is just a simple course about a form. Uh, so potentially fairly dry material, but we've actually spent time to build out the content with them in SCORM uh, or in Storyline rather. And um, by the way, I'm, I am logged in as an admin, which is why you see these uh, items here, this toolbar. One of the nice things about PATH is that as an admin, I do all my course setup and course authoring on the front end, uh, like an inline editor on a CMS. I don't have to open up multiple web pages or log in or log out or anything like that when I'm setting up my courses. So I'm gonna jump into one of these um, uh, presentations here. And then this is going to open up our SCORM content. I'm going to restart the course for us. There we go. Um, now, when we create these with our clients, we generally can provide uh, everything that's needed. So um, the video, the scripting, the voiceover acting, uh, typically the subject matter experts are provided by the uh, organization, but we can handle everything beyond that if desired. So any of the project management to put this together, the communication, um, the scripting, the scope and sequencing, um, all of that is the kind of stuff that the learning strategy and design team does. And then in this, we have easy ways to navigate throughout um, the course, we can even create uh, areas to sort of create your own path for the course, as well as have embedded components within the course itself that'll ask you quizzes about how things are going and what you think might be correct or incorrect in a fully immersive experience there. Uh, I have not studied this course very well, so I'm gonna listen to Jean explain why I got that one wrong. And this is a, just an example of bringing in one of your subject matter experts to have us overlay in the course. Again, that fully immersive experience that we can help design um, with your team. So that wraps up my demo here. I did wanna leave a few minutes for, um, for some questions, Reggie. If anything came in, uh, I'd be um, happy to address those things now. Yes, sir. So here are a couple of questions. Uh, one is, can you list the platforms which are easily transferable for webinars? For example, Zoom, et cetera. Was WebEx one of those? Yeah. Um, so we don't have a uh, integration with WebEx today. Um, we are, we have it on our roadmap and we had actually started building that out in 2020. Um, it, it has not yet been completed. I don't have a delivery date for it. However, it is possible to use any, um, any webinar tool on our platform. Um, what you can do is you can put a link within a course and then it'll inherit the security of that course in order to get to that link. The integrated webinars are then a step up from that because it does allow you to create in path and auto create in the other platform. Like if you ever ever created a, a Zoom invite in Outlook, same kind of concept, and also get the reporting data back into path. But you can still put 
you know, any, any kind of webinar link in there and inherit the security of the course. Thank you, sir. Next uh -huh. question is not necessarily a question for Blue Sky, but can uh -huh. someone explain to me the difference between an LMS and a CMS? And if it is appropriate to use an LMS, even if you don't need CE tracking, et cetera. Um, I can speak to that, certainly. Uh, a learning management system uh, and a content management system. A learning management system typically has uh, tools built out specifically for delivering content in a certain way with logic applied to it, like structural procedure for a learner to go through this content in, uh, uh, in a process. Um, a content management system is simply a tool to use um, to put content on a web page. So typically like when you're hosting a website, you would use a CMS like WordPress or Joomla or Drupal or something along those lines. Um, and when you're using uh, an LMS, you would be delivering educational course content. Uh, you can still use a CMS to do things like embed videos um, and uh, you know, host content, post PDFs, put content on a website. But generally what you don't have is pre-built uh, tracking tools for completions, um, downloads, things like that. You might have some rudimentary analytics uh, and you could build custom stuff, but generally it's not gonna be included just by virtue of being a CMS. Cool, thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, do you have an app that goes along with the desktop version? Um, I guess what I would was in, inferred in that, if not, um, are you uh, mobile ready? Yes, uh, we do not have a native app currently. We are fully uh, responsive out of the box. So the platform, the desktop version of the platform is um, fully responsive. It's all HTML5, so nothing is in Flash or nothing requires any kind of download or anything like that. Um, and it all is all designed to be uh, fully mobile friendly as well as fully accessible um, and ADA compliant out of the box. Thank you, sir. Next mm -hmm. question is, mm -hmm. is there any social learning slash networking component for example, communities with discussion forums. Yeah, so there's sort of two applications of that that I would want to address. One is in the context of a course, and then the other is in the context of an event. Um, in a course, we do have some lightweight discussion functionality that's basically a plugin that allows you to post a question or reply to a question or have some threaded conversation, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, we also have, for folks that do have more robust community needs, uh, we, in, we in, uh, integrate with other platforms. We integrate with Higher Logic. We have a partnership with Brizio, and generally we plug in um, Fontiva Salesforce communities, things like that. We plug in if there are uh, broad needs for community. With respect to uh, events, we do have chat tools. We do have Q&A tools on live streams. Of course, if you do it in a webinar tool, you also inherit some features through that. Uh, and then uh, it is also possible to do any kind of plugin or any kind of uh, chat tool or drop into the platform through HTML or JavaScript. Thank you, sir. Last uh -huh. question. Do you have a search tool to search by topic? Uh, we do have a search tool to search by topic. Um, we have, uh, you know, a catalog with topics, categories, subcategories, hidden categories, uh, tracks, keywords, lots of different ways to organize your content. Um, we've also worked a little bit with um, Fuse Search and a couple other partners to build uh, federated search tools on your CMS. So dropping our content through RSS into um, your website platform so that your search is unified across any of your um, third party tools. Uh, like CMS, LMS, et cetera. All right, my friend.